Confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So please would you stand? Of course, it's Bible Sunday today, and much of the words that we say in our liturgy are taken directly from the scriptures, and so we sing the hymn of the angels that were sung at the birth of Jesus Christ in the words of the Gloria. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So as we stand, let us pray that great prayer written by Thomas Cranmer in the Book of Common Prayer. So we say together, Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, Help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. for our readings and do hear them carefully.
The first reading is from Nehemiah chapter 8. All the people gathered together in the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square, before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. The scribe Ezra stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the purpose. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave a sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and send portions, and to make great rejoicing, because they understood the words that were declared to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So with that amazing image of the people of Israel listening to the scroll being read out probably for the first time in many many years in the in the book of Nehemiah just then we stand to hear the scriptures and so please would you stand uh, for the gospel reading and of course in our churches um, we always venerate the gospels we always stand to hear the gospel read because it's in the gospels that we receive our salvation and that is in the gospels that we meet with Jesus directly and that's why we always make a bit of a to-do about reading out from the Gospel book. Of course, at the moment, we're not processing in the usual way, but we still hold it in great reverence. Alleluia, alleluia, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. <clears throat> Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, 
The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I've got my prop today. You might remember this from last year. It took so long to make it, I decided to use it every year now. <laughs> so this is my wondrous library, the wondrous library of the Bible. The Bible is actually 66 books written over a long period of time in lots of different contexts by different people. But we do believe that the word of God is infused through the words of each of these books, but in different ways. And in some ways, my job is a little bit being like a librarian. I just realised I was completely out of shot for the people watching at home. <laughs> Um, let me just move it back a bit further so that you can see. Yeah, there we go. Right. So yes, um, my job's a little bit like being a librarian. So I wonder, in this group here, who likes to read biographies? Who, who's a biography fan? Brenda, you're a fan of biographies. If you like biographies, probably recommend that you read one of the Gospels, maybe all the way through. We only hear like, snippets from the Gospels on a Sunday morning. But actually sitting down and reading one all the way through um, is a really enriching thing to do. So maybe you might want to take one of those books off the shelf of our Bible library. Um, if you want the stories um, of Jesus' interactions with women, um, I would pick Luke's Gospel. If you want something short, I'd read Mark. Mark's the shortest of the Gospels. It's the most immediate. It was written in very simple Greek. His Greek wasn't very good. <laughs> so he only had a limited vocabulary. So it's quite easy to read, is Mark's Gospel. He uses the word suddenly a lot. So he says, suddenly this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. It's very exciting. So Mark's Gospel is quite, quite pacey, pacey read. So you might want to read Mark's Gospel. Matthew wrote his Gospel with Jewish people in mind. And so there's an awful lot of richness in Matthew's Gospel, and there's also all the wonderful teachings of Jesus, like the parables and the Sermon on the Mount, and blessed are, um, blessed are, the, are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's, that's in Matthew's Gospel, as well as Luke's. If, if you're a bit of a philosophical kind of person, if you, like to, if you like to make your brain hurt a little bit, then maybe you might like to read John's Gospel. So if you're a fan of biography, Basically, the Gospels are the biographies of Jesus, they're the stories of Jesus' life. Um, so I would pick one of the Gospels. Now, you might have spotted, I've colour-coded my, my library. The Gospel books are colour-coded blue here, and you'll have spotted there's another one that's blue, which is this one here, which is the Book of Acts. Now, those that were at phone church on Thursday should know who wrote the Book of Acts. Luke, thank you, David. You were listening on Thursday. You weren't all fast asleep. <laughs> the reason I've colour coded the Book of Acts blue to match the Gospel books is actually the Book of Acts of the Apostles, even though it comes after the Book of John, which doesn't make much sense in, in terms of the order of the Bible, is actually the sequel to Luke. So it ought to come straight after Luke's Gospel, really. Luke wrote his gospel, he addressed it to somebody called Theophilus. If you look at the beginning of Luke's gospel, it says, My dear Theophilus, I have researched everything you asked me to about, about Jesus' Jesus' life, and this is his story. And he begins the book of Acts in the same way, my dear Theophilus. Now, we're not sure who Theophilus was. Theophilus could have been a wealthy person who'd become a Christian, 
who decided to pay Luke to, to write everything down. Because at that time, in the very early church, of course, the stories of Jesus were just being repeated orally and shared amongst the early Christians. And um, Luke sits down to try and collate them all together to, to basically make a record of everything that happened. Um, so Theophilus could have been a real person that was a person of means mm -hmm. that gave some money to Luke so that he could do his research and do his project and interview people. The interesting thing about Luke's, um, Luke's gospel of course, Luke was one of the companions of Paul, and we also think that Luke probably knew Mary pretty well, because of course it's only in Luke's Gospel that you get the story of Jesus being lost in the temple, which is a story that only the mother of <laughs> Jesus would have been able to tell. Um, so Luke was obviously quite a well-connected person. The other reason is that Theophilus could just mean any one of us, because Theophilus actually means God-lover. So it could be just saying, if you are a lover of God, you will want to read this book. Um, so I've colour coded the Book of Acts. Now really, the Book of Acts is more like a journal than a biography. And again, it's quite an exciting read. And occasionally, Luke will suddenly say, and then we set sail for Troas, or and then we went here, and then we went there. Because he was there. So it's an eyewitness account. Really good story, the Book of Acts. So you might want to read that. Who... Who here likes poetry? Any poetry fans? Or just put her hand up. Third place to go. Book of Psalms. It's one of the most beautiful poetry written um, that we have. Of course, um, it's huge, the Book of Psalms. It's the, it's the prayer book of the Hebrew people and it is the core of our prayer life as a church. Certainly every day of morning prayer and evening prayer, which I say each day, we always recite the Psalms. And if you go to stay in any monastery with monks or nuns anywhere in the world, any denomination, the Psalms will be the beating heart of their worship. And the wonderful thing about the Book of Psalms is that it covers every emotion that there is. From God, why is this happening to me? I've been reading a lot of those psalms recently in solidarity. Why is this happening? What's going on? And then psalms say, thank you God, you've blessed me. There's a whole mixture. And there's far more lament ones in there than, than there are jolly ones, which makes sense really because life is tough. So yes, if you like poetry, then the book of psalms is for you. What if you're a little bit loved up? I'm thinking of Mr. and Mrs. Charles here. <laughs> you will find in our beautiful library there is some love poetry, surprisingly. Probably one of the most unusual books of scripture. Um, I remember discovering this as a teenager at school and giggling, blushing, at the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon. And of course, there was that reading. It was quite funny because the couple, the first couple I married here at the beginning of October, they got married on the wettest day I think we've had. I think it said it was the wettest day on record in October. <laughs> and they got married and they had that beautiful reading from Song of Solomon that says, many waters cannot quench love. <laughs> so it was perfect for their wedding day. Uh, that was Kyle and John if you're watching online. Um, so the Song of Songs, it's quite an unusual, it's quite, it's sort of erotic poetry. Um, from, I'm just looking up, written on the back of here, there's a bit of detail about each book. Um, it's around the 10th century BC, so it's, it's, it's very, very old, about a thousand years before Jesus, um, that book was written down. Unusual to find it in scripture, but there it is in all its beauty, stories of love. Maybe people like history, who likes, who likes a bit of history? Yeah, Noel likes a bit of history. Well, the yellow ones here, history. In fact, actually, the reading we had today from the book of Nehemiah is part of the history of, of the Jewish people. And um, the book of Nehemiah is about after the exile. So the Hebrews were all sent off to Babylon, where they were in exile. Do you remember the uh, Boney M song, By the Rivers of Babylon? That's one of the Psalms, Psalm 137. A uh, pop song based on a song, you see. Um, and so a lot of the, the stories, actually, and a lot of the psalms are about that experience of exile, which I think is very relevant for us this year. Um, 
And so the book of Nehemiah is about when a, a small group of Jews returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls of the city after, after they were allowed to return, after the end of the exile. And that's what that's about. And that passage we heard today that Hilary read for us was when they rediscovered the books of the law, which are these, the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. And that is the core of Hebrew scriptures, the Torah or the Pentateuch as it's called in Greek. So there's those five books and they read from the books and the people wept when they heard it because they probably hadn't heard the scriptures read to them for hundreds of years maybe even. Um, so if you like history, there's plenty of it. Who likes a bit of gore? They all like horror? <laughs> horror? Yeah, horror. Right, if you like a bit of gore, go for Judges. <laughs> Book of Judges, there's some really good stories in the Book of Judges. You've got the story of um, Samson and Delilah. Um, you've got the story, one of my favourites, of Jael, who puts a tent peg through the head of the enemy. Um, she seduces him and then rams a tent peg through his head. So yeah, there's, there's, there's a bit of gore in there. Um, it's a bit, bit gruesome, but that's about the very early, early um, leaders of the Hebrew people. Some of them were good, some of them were bad. There's also Deborah, who was a female judge, um, who was he's a bit of a hero of mine as well, in the Book of Judges. So yeah, if you like a bit of horror. So we've got so much, haven't we? Who likes, who likes romance? Does anybody like a romance novel or a love no? Oh, well, you're not, none of you are romantic. <laughs> oh, well, my favourite. It is a bit of a romance. It's the story of Ruth, and you can see it's only a little book. It's only a, a, a short book the book of Ruth, and it's actually my favourite in the Old Testament. And the book of Ruth is a beautiful story of redemption. And what's lovely about the story of Ruth is that Ruth is a foreign refugee um, who moves to live um, in Bethlehem with her mother-in-law, Naomi, and she manages to get some work on a local farm, and she ends up um, meeting a man who helps her, and um, he ends up marrying her at the end. Sorry, I'm just a big spoiler. <laughs> they get together in the end, but that's why I like it. But the beautiful thing about the story of Ruth is, if you remember, at the beginnings of Matthew and Luke's Gospels, you have a, um, a rundown of the family tree of Jesus. And I can't remember if it's in Luke or Matthew, but Ruth is part of that family tree of Jesus because Boaz and Ruth have a baby called Obed and Obed is the father of Jesse and Jesse is the father of King David and that's part of the line of Jesus. Remember, he's often called the son of David. So this foreign girl, this refugee girl, Ruth, a Moabite, she wasn't Jewish, she is part of the family tree of Jesus. So there's a connection between the Old Testament and the New, a direct connection. And if you remember at the resurrection, Jesus says to Mary Magdalene, I'm going to my God and your God. You remember? And they're the exact words that Ruth says to Naomi. She says, I'm going to follow you. I will come with you to Bethlehem. Your God will become my God. Your God will become my God. So it's a beautiful story. So yes, it's romantic. They get together. It's a lovely story. But it's part of our salvation story. And that's really what the Bible is is a collection of the stories of God's dealing with his people. And we are so lucky now. Um, the Bible has been experienced in different ways by people over the centuries. So of course, at the time of Nehemiah, they had it on a huge scroll, and they would have to roll the scroll to get to the part that you'd want to read out. Um, and it would probably be kept under lock and key. It took seven years to train to be a Bible scribe. So if you wanted to be a scribe and copy out the scriptures, you would have to train for seven years. It was such an important, considered to be such an important job. So at that time, it wasn't very accessible really, which is why people learnt, learnt the scriptures by heart and repeated them to one another. Once you get to the time of Jesus, you began to have some new technologies. People began to send letters on papyrus. They were also scrolls. So if you notice, when you read any of these letters, and these were letters sent to the churches, at the beginning it often says, 
Paul to Timothy, a brother in Christ, greetings. And that's the first thing it says. And it's a bit like how we would write a letter and we'd have our address at the top, wouldn't we? And the date and who we're addressing it to. And the reason it would say that, Paul to Timothy, clearly at the top, was because that's the top of the scroll. So you'd be able to read that bit when you opened it up. You'd be able to see who it's for without unscrolling the entire thing. Um, and they were copied down. And eventually, um, something was invented called the Codex, which is essentially what we would call a book now. And of course, with a Codex, you can jump to whichever part of the book that you like. So I can pick up a Bible now, and I can go, oh, I'd like to read this bit, and I can get straight there without any problem. I don't have to pull a scroll off a shelf, unroll it, <laughs> work out where to get to the point. So the technology shifted over the centuries. Then, of course, once we got to um, the invention of the printing press, that hugely revolutionised how we read books. Because, of course, if you can print a whole sheet of writing in a couple of seconds, that cuts down the amount of time it would take for a, a monk to write out every word very, very carefully. So the printing press absolutely revolutionised um, the way that we read things. And of course, eventually, the Bible was translated because of the Reformation, people were starting to say, we need to be able to read the scriptures in our own language. Because at that time, sort of 1500s, the scriptures were only read in Latin and only read in church. Ordinary people like us wouldn't have been able to understand them very well. And so people started to argue for the Bible to be translated into our people's own language. And actually what I've got in my bag here is a Bible in Estonian. And actually the Reformation is very important to the Estonian people because it was the first time that their language had been put, put down in written form. And so they, and a lot of languages are like that around the world, but they were first kind of put pen to paper. A lot of the languages in Africa the first time that they were kind of actually physically written down was when the Bible was translated into those languages. Um, so that's my Estonian Bible. Um, so yes, the Reformation was very important to them. And of course, William Tyndale was one of the key people who translated the Bible into English, which eventually led, of course, to the King James Version of the Bible, which was published in 1611. This isn't from 1611, this is Paul's christening bible that i brought, brought with me um, but once we got to the beginning of the 20th century people did have bibles in their own homes you could afford to buy one and some of you will remember you may well have a massive family bible at home does anyone have one of those yeah and you write in the front pages your family tree and you can see all the notes in there and perhaps on a sunday if you're a very pious family the father of the family would read from, from the Bible to, to his family on Sunday. Um, and then, of course, as time went on, more and more different versions, different translations of the Bible were created. So, one of the things to remember is that the Bible, in its original languages, wasn't written in English. Its original languages, the Old Testament, the books written before Jesus, written in Hebrew, and also they were translated into Greek about 500 years before Jesus. So we've got a mixture of Greek and Hebrew for the Old Testament. The New Testament was written in Greek. And then eventually, in about the third century, St. Jerome translated the whole lot into Latin, into what was known as the Vulgate version of the Bible. So we've got Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, and this is a Greek New Testament that I was given when I started my training. So from that, sort of probably in the middle of the last century, the King James Version of the Bible started to become a little bit archaic with all the these and the thous, and people don't speak like that anymore, so people wanted to make it even more understandable to ordinary people. And so there were all sorts of versions. The one we use at church is called the New Revised Standard Version, what I've got here is a Good News Bible. This was my first Bible. It's got all my little stickers on the back. And it's got all sorts of signatures in it from various youth camps I went on when I was a kid. So it's, it's got a lot of uh, nostalgia for me, this one. And I always used to like my Good News Bible because it had pictures in it as well. Um, 
Now, actually, I used to find the Good News Bible a little bit kind of um, simplistic, but it was actually written with people who don't speak English as a first language in mind. If you're not sure what Bible translation to get, a good idea is to look up a very familiar passage and read it. So if you're in, the, in a Christian bookshop or in, some, or in the library and you're looking at different translations, maybe look up something like the 23rd Psalm, which you might know quite well. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me love to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Now that's the King James Version. What does that sound like in the Good News? Interestingly, in the Good News Bible, it doesn't say, he makes me lie down in green pastures. It says, he makes me lie down in green grass, which is kind of quite clunky. It's not beautiful poetry, is it? But if you were learning English for the first time, you probably wouldn't know what pasture meant, but you would know what grass meant. <laughs> so it's actually easier to understand. So the Good News Bible is particularly good if you know somebody that's, that's perhaps from another country who wants to read the Bible in English, give them a copy of the Good News Bible. Um, there's also, I've got one called The Message, which I really enjoy, which is a paraphrase. It's not a direct translation, it's a paraphrase of the Bible. Um, but it's very good. I use The Message when I haven't got a clue what Paul's on about in one of his letters. Paul's letters are quite hard to understand. One of the lovely things is, I think it's in 1 Peter, one of the letters of Peter, he actually says that. He says Paul's letters are really difficult to understand. So even Peter couldn't understand what Paul was on about sometimes. But <laughs> I often look them up in the message translation because Eugene Peterson is a, is a Bible scholar. He's really good at Greek and he's really good at converting what would be an idiom in Greek into modern English. It's a little bit Americanized, but it, it helps you to kind of understand what Paul's on about. So the message is really good as well. We're even luckier in the 21st century because, of course, we can access the Bible on the internet. Um, you might have the app on your phone. If you don't have it, I would recommend you get it. It's called Version. It's free. You can get it on your, if you've got a tablet or an iPad um, or if you've got a smartphone. You can download it and you can do all sorts of things using the app on your phone. You can even get it to read the Bible to you. Um, and it's David Suchet's version. You know, Poirot, David Suchet. He, he did a really brilliant reading of the entirety of the Bible, uh, the NIV translation, which is an unhappy translation of the Bible. So we can access it in so many different ways now, far more ways than those people who Nehemiah that had to just sit and listen to it being read out to them. Um, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have been able to dream of the way in which we can engage with scripture. So it's like the most wondrous library that you've ever encountered. So I'd like you to use your imagination a little bit. This library is a place of wonder. You will not leave in the same state that you were when you arrived. This library is a place of story and encounter. Above all, it is the most accessible place to meet with God. If you want to hear God's voice, come into the library of the Bible. If you want to know comfort, encouragement and guidance, come into the library of the Bible. As I mentioned earlier, Thomas Cranmer wrote the Collect for this week, the Prayer for Bible Sunday. He encourages us to hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest the scriptures. So let me encourage you to hear the scriptures, really listen, let the words sink in. Read the scriptures, underline the words and phrases that stand out for you. Make notes and read them back. Learn more about what the Bible means. Read a commentary or listen to a sermon. Inwardly digest the scriptures. Why not learn a passage by heart? I like to learn the Psalms by heart. If you learn scripture by heart, you will find the words bubbling up inside just when you need them. So pray with me, Thomas Cranmer's prayer. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. 
Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So please would you stand as you are able as we declare our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit on me as we come to pray. Lord Jesus, in your being and through your life, you reveal the glory of our God, our Father. We come to you now, trusting in your promise to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord Jesus, we pray for your church as she proclaims your gospel of love and truth. Let all who search the scriptures to find eternal life do so in the light of your wisdom and through your loving and compassionate eyes. Forgive us when we seek to use your word for our own ends and to condemn others. Give us the grace and openness to hear your message for us today and to allow your word to abide in us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Lord Jesus, you were sent into this world by God our Father, but so many in this world refused to believe or accept you. Still today, so many turn their backs on you or are unable to hear your truth. Let there be a new spirit of yearning for unity and peace in the world. Let those who claim that God is on their side Recognise the truth that the love of God is for all peoples and that the word of God cannot belong exclusively to anyone. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the living word of God who came to dwell among us. You know the demands and delights of living in community with others. Help us who believe in you live our lives in the light of your wisdom and to see others through your loving and compassionate eyes. Help us to recognise and acknowledge you in the lives and work of those around us and to be open to the possibilities of meeting you 
in unexpected places. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you brought comfort and healing to all who came to you in distress. We bring to you now those we know who are suffering any kind of pain. We pray especially for any who are sick with COVID-19, those who are experiencing the effects of long COVID. And we pray by name for Wyatt and Garrick Ruffin, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret and Jim Gilmore, Luke Firth, Sandra Mellon, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Michelle Jenkins, Audrey Wilkinson, Richard Abbas, John Tuckwood, Ethel Hadfield, and Madge Bunting. We pray that you will meet their needs with your love and compassion, and lighten their darkness with the eternal flame of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the living word of God, but you faced death and overcame it, rising to a new and eternal life. We remember especially those who have recently died, Gillian Proctor, Rini German, and Edith Miller. And we also have the year's mind of Jesse Wade. Strengthen us with faith and hope of life in your eternal kingdom, where you reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God for all people and for all time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we begin a new week, we pray that we each might be strengthened by reading the scriptures, that we each find an opportunity to hear God's voice in his word for us this week. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please would you stand as you are able for the peace. <coughs> I must make sure I remember to take my mask off this time. <laughs> Keep forgetting. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace in a safe way. Peace be with you all. Stand. As the grey ones scattered in the fields and the great ones dispersed on the hillside, and now reunited on this table in bread and wine, 
So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, but the Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, but the Son in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine again. He praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made for once, once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. <coughs> Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St John the Baptist, St James, and all the saints, the feast at your table in heaven, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. looking for the coming of his kingdom. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we pray in the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, the Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ broken for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen.
Let these holy mysteries open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know the way of life and walk in it without stumbling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we have in you leading us through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice, to send us out to the power of your Spirit, to live and to work to your presence and glory. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill in your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.